What's going on guys? It's Tabmok99. Now if there's one thing that's inspired Mortal Kombat, it would be classic martial arts and kung fu movies. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. But you know what else inspired Mortal Kombat? If you guessed it, well, you can read me like an open book. That's right, I'm talking about books. The first book that I'm going to talk about is one that Dan Piscina mentioned at Combat Con last year. If you haven't seen the video, you should pause this and go check it out now. The book that he mentioned is Skills of the Vagabonds. The main idea of this book is that there's a secret underground group of warriors called the Vagabonds. They're not exactly a group. They're extremely secretive and so they don't train together or anything. So not even the Vagabonds are aware of other Vagabonds. These guys push themselves to the absolute brink of performance. They use bamboo poles to vault up to the rooftops of buildings. They walk up walls and hide out in people's ceilings. And they have a number of tricks up their sleeves to fool their enemies into thinking they have magic powers. The idea behind this book is that the Vagabond Warriors were skilled not only in fighting, but also in using fire, poisons, and other mind games that would make outsiders think they can control black magic. The book claims that these techniques were eventually brought to Japan and became what we now know as the Ninja. The next book I want to talk about is one that John Tobias himself shared over Twitter not too long ago. China's Ninja Connection. This book talks about a tightly knit clan called, guess what, the Lin Kuei, which is Chinese for forest demons. This clan started out as just a regular family who one day abandoned their normal life and decided to live out the rest of their days in the forest. They learned to live off the land and survived by imitating the animals that they saw in the forest. They learned which foods were safe to eat and which ones were poisonous. They also developed their own fighting technique based on mimicking the animals that they saw. Like they would imitate a cat and actually claw at trees in order to strengthen their hands. Or they'd imitate a lizard as they'd crawl across the ground. They'd also imitate a bear as they'd totally overpower their enemy. Now eventually this family decided they wanted to grow, so they kidnapped nearby wanderers and inducted them into the clan. And that's how they got their start. The book also goes into the hierarchy of the clan. They don't have the rank of Grandmaster here. Instead, the leader is the strongest and wisest among them, and is called the Wu Lin, which means Wizard of the Forest. His second-hand man is the Mui Tu, which means Disciple to the Wizard of the Forest. Basically, he's training to do everything that the leader can do, so that when the time comes, he can step up and become the new leader. Supposedly, the Wu Lin has an almost mystical control of his surroundings. And with the mere power of his voice, he can cause the waters around him to dry up, or summon the trees of the forest to help camouflage him. These are the kinds of things that he's teaching the Mui Tu. And below them, there are several other ranks of warriors. There's the Lin Yang, the forest warriors. They're the highest class, and their job is to protect the camp. They spend most of their days hunting and training. Below them is the Lin Su, the forest spiders. They help feed the other members of the clan and also teach the children the ways of nature. There's another class of warriors that just aren't quite good enough. They don't quite make it. They don't even get a name. These guys can't survive the rigorous Lin Kuei training. They tend to die young. Eventually, the clan developed a new leadership system they put in place. The new leader was called the Sher Lin, which means forest priest. The first Sher Lin was a scholar and he sent the clan all over China to study the various trades, dialects, and ways of life. It was because of this Sher Lin that the Lin Kuei techniques eventually spread throughout China and beyond, reaching Japan, where it was called Ninjutsu, and also Korea, where it became Huarong. Now one cool thing that both of these books do is they demonstrate some pretty brutal fighting techniques. In China's Ninja Connection, they show stuff like how to break someone's neck using a stick and how you can use your boot to conceal a talon knife. They also show a Lin Kuei decapitating someone with it. I'm hoping that's just simulated and not actually real. Skills of the Vagabonds shows stuff like this too. I think my favorite is when they show how to use a towel to get somebody to drop their knife. Don't forget to bring a towel. Okay. The other thing about both of these books is it's pretty easy to see how Mortal Kombat took its inspiration from them. In Mortal Kombat Mythologies, the backstory revealed how there was once a Lin Kuei named Takeda, who eventually fled the country and went to Japan, where he started up the Shiri Ryu. And that was how the epic rivalry between these two clans started. 
So both of those books are cool and interesting on their own, but I also think it's a lot of fun to look at the same sources that the Mortal Kombat team was looking at when they were inspired to come up with the story and the characters and the special moves and everything. You might even say that's a really good way to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, let's switch tracks for a minute and look at the Mortal Kombat novel by Jeff Rogan. Right up front, the author mentions two sources for inspiration. Great Civilizations, China, by Ian Morrison, and Alchemy, Medicine, and Religion in the China of AD 320, the James R. Ware translation. Well, let's delve deeper and take a look at each of these. Great Civilizations, China is a pretty small book. If I had to guess, I'd say the target readers were kids. Well, anyway, this opens up with a chart showing the different dynasties that have controlled the country, going all the way back to 1766 BC. Now, in the Mortal Kombat novel, you can kind of see how they used this to work in some of the dates by showing that the Qin Emperor unified the land in 221 BC, succeeding where the Chu Dynasty and the Shang Dynasty had failed. The China book also shows things like the legend of Horse Ear Mountain, which is the dwelling place of the god Yu. The Mortal Kombat novel made use of this legend also. When Sub-Zero killed Scorpion, he dumped his body into this waterway, which is what angered Yu so much that he allowed Scorpion to come back from the dead to take his revenge. They also show a lot of the real life history, things like the building of the Great Wall of China. It's pronounced China. <laughs> it's actually a pretty interesting book if you can get your hands on it. Well, the last one I'll talk about is Alchemy, Medicine, and Religion in the China of AD 320. This one's kind of a tough read, but it's also easy to see how this one influenced Jeff Rovin's Mortal Kombat novel. They talk about the yin and the yang and the duality of all things, which is a pretty important concept in Mortal Kombat in general, but especially in the novel. There's also a part in this book that says the roots of a thing may be well balanced, but its branches may be deviant. Now this is actually the same quote that's used as the opening of the Mortal Kombat novel. But the main thrust of this book is actually the ongoing quest for immortality. This book goes into dozens of techniques that supposedly allow you to become a genie. Now by genie, they don't mean the kind that lives in a magic lamp and grants wishes. They basically just mean that you live forever. The main way they say you do it is by eating a mixture of gold and cinnabar, which is actually a mercury mineral, meaning it's toxic, so don't actually try this at home. They also go into breathitarianism, which they don't call it that by name, but it's where you don't eat anything, you don't even drink water. You basically learn how to survive by swallowing your own breaths, and then you live forever. All these ideas seem hopeless at best, but dangerous at worst. But anyway, all of this sort of forms the basis for Shang Tsung's arc in the Mortal Kombat novel. He's on a quest for immortality, and he's spent over 10 years studying scrolls that he got from alchemists and magicians, working with minerals and liquids, fire and blood. Then eventually he gets it when he masters the trick of stealing souls. Well, that's about it for now. I guess you could say it's time to close the book on this topic. If you want to buy any of the books that we discussed in this video, use the links below. That really helps me out when you do that. And I'd like to give a shout out to the Combatpedia guys for this awesome shirt. Uh, they actually made another one that's even better. They're going to be giving it out at CombatCon next week, so look out for that. And until next time, this is Tabmok99 reminding you, never judge a book by its cover.